Well, hello out there in YouTube land. Happy Thanksgiving to you um, from my home to yours. I feel like this day, I just felt like it required more. Um, I'm trying to think of the word to say this. I had it all in my head and then I came out here and it's like, it's like the Lord's changing it right before my eyes. I feel like this day just requires more reflection. I, I just, I feel like at least here in America, I feel like we make everything too commercialized. Um, almost, we almost don't even take a minute to think about God in the things that we do. And, uh, so I felt compelled by the spirit to, to give a little message today on Thanksgiving to hopefully help to edify you and maybe help you and, and me be able to focus more on what this day truly should mean to all of us. So anyway, before we get started, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Abba Father, thank you so much for uh, this beautiful Thanksgiving day, Lord. With you, every day truly is Thanksgiving. We truly are thankful for you and the gifts that you've given us and whatever they are, Lord, whatever they may be. Um, I just wanna pray that those out there listening to this message that you have provided, Lord, I pray that, uh, I pray that they would be edified in it. I pray that it would challenge them and open their minds and let them be renewed through your spirit and that each and every one of them would be blessed by it. These things we come and we pray humbly in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. So anyway, um, we're going to start out today in Philippians chapter 4. And I'm going to read uh, Philippians 4, verses 4 through 13. So chapter 4, starting in verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the peace of God shall be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound everywhere, and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. So now in Philippians 4 here, we see Paul's writings. And he's talking about the peace that transcends understanding. He's talking about being content in whatever your circumstances are, whether you're afflicted, whether you're abased, whether you're, uh, you know, I mean, whether you're at the beginning of your walk or the end, no matter where you are, you can learn to be content in all things through Christ Jesus. And uh, isn't that really what today is about? Isn't today about not the wanting of more, 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 and more, and more as we head into this this next season i'm not even going to say the word but the commercial season that they they say is, is about christ when it, it's got nothing to do with him um for lack of better words but we got, we all need to learn more to be content with what we have we live in this world where everything's about consumerism and and you know the one who has the most toys wins i'm sorry but that's not what christ died for that that's not what he brought us to um so anyway, I'm going to move on here. I'm going to go to Psalm 136. I'm going to get a nice Old Testament scripture in there today. And I'm going to read all of Psalm 136. Very appropriate for today. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. 
the moon and the stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever, and brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endureth forever, and made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endureth forever. But he overthrew Pharaoh and his host into the Red Sea, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which smote great kings, for his mercy endureth forever, and slew famous kings, for his mercy endureth forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endureth forever, and Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endureth forever, and gave their land for an inheritance, for his mercy endureth forever. Even an heritage unto Israel, his servant, for his mercy endureth forever. Who remembered us in our low estate, for his mercy endureth forever? and hath redeemed us from our enemies, for his mercy endureth forever. Who giveth food to all flesh, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. We give you so much thanks today, Father. Abba, Father, thank you for providing food for all flesh, for providing for our every needs. Um, the scripture says, look on to the sparrow. Does God not provide for him? Also, he will provide for you. So I'm messing this thing up. I'm just ad limbing here. But Solomon in all his glory was not was not uh, arrayed in such as these. Will not God also care for you? So much to be thankful for. So much to be thankful for. Little post-it notes from my wife stuck in my Bible here and there. Just, just so many things to be thankful for. So I just want to... Uh, I want to say here, I have a little bit of notes here, and I just want to challenge you guys about, about what this day means to each and every one of you and what it means to God himself. Reflect, pray, seek the Lord. What is this day really about? Is it about fleshly things, food, football, or is it about Christ and the ultimate sacrifice that he made for our weak flesh to justify us, to bring us into reconciliation with God the Father? So that's my challenge for you today as you go through this day, whether you're whether you're celebrating alone, maybe maybe you've lost a loved one, maybe you're just celebrating alone today. Surely you can still find at least one thing to be thankful for. And I challenge you to look at that one thing, meditate on it, and reflect on it to the Lord. Or whether you're with a huge family today, maybe, maybe there's 30, 40, 50, 100 of you, and you're gathering around a table today and, and you come from all walks of life and all different things. Give thanks to God. Talk about God around the table. Maybe you could read Psalm 136 around the table today. Just bring a little bit of scripture into it because I know I know a lot of people don't. I used to be one of those people, so don't think I'm speaking. I'm not a hypocrite. I've been there too. I've done all the things, everything possibly wrong that you could do, I've done. And yet God gave, God forgave me, gave me mercy, gave me a, a new fresh start in him, opened my eyes and ears, gave me eyes to see and ears to hear. Um, so the last scripture that I have here is 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I had to run to the store this morning, and as soon as I pulled back in the driveway, this scripture came into my mind. Ran in the house, wrote it down, and I am feeling the spirit right now in me as I'm trying to find the page. Spirit come, Spirit come. All right, two Corinthians. We flipped over to Galatians. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Your words are not mine. All right, Second Corinthians chapter ten, and I just want to read the whole thing because I feel like Paul can speak it better than I ever could. It says now I Paul beseech you by meekness and gentleness by the meekness and gentleness of Christ who in presence am base among you but being absent and bold towards you but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. How many of us can say that we do that? I certainly have not. Working on that one. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled, do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trust to himself that he is Christ, let, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters, say they, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Let us such and one think this, that such as we are in word by letters when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that command themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. But we will not boast of things without measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach un even unto you. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you, for we are come as far as to you also in preaching of the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased that we shall in be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly to preach the gospel into regions beyond you, and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commandeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. So, right there, we see it, holding every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Another challenge today for all of us. Let us all try to hold every thought captive to the obedience of Christ today. Um, I used to be really guilty at family gatherings um, of being the one to say I've seen and lewd things. A lot of unwholesome thoughts came out of my mouth in my younger days. I've since repented of that. And I still sometimes, the enemy likes to bring those to me and accuse me of those. And i got to remind him that I'm under the blood now. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. In the words of, the, words of Paul's writings again. Um... Yeah, that is my prayer for you today. I, I pray that you are blessed beyond all measure by the gospel of Jesus Christ today. I pray that that on this day of thanksgiving unto God, that you would give thanks to God, but also that you would keep his commandments and do as he's commanded you to do and spread that love and joy and peace and kindness of the Spirit unto others and show them what Christ has done for you. Talk about that around the dinner table today so that the gospel might be preached throughout all nations. It's not God's will that any should perish, for he is long-suffering in the writings of Peter. So I just pray today that, uh, that you would be blessed by this message and learn what thanksgiving unto God really means. It's showing our appreciation for who he is and what he's done for us. That being said, let's close out in a word of prayer together, shall we? Abba, Father, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, coming unto you with all things in supplication, with thanksgiving, as Paul said, and holding every thought captive to the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, Father. You've done so much good things for us, Lord. We all have roofs over our head. Um, we have food in our bellies, Lord. You provide for us as you provide for the wild birds and the sparrows and the beasts, God. And you love us so much more. You give us all things. Um, maybe not all things that we desire through our fleshly means, God, but all the things that we need for our existence. And you equip us to go before and preach the gospel and do the things that you would have us to do, Lord. And I pray today that you would fill many with edification and with your Holy Spirit, God. And those that don't know you that stumble upon this message, Lord, I pray that, uh, that they would feel you and you would give them eyes to see and ears to hear your message and your gospel and that they would turn to you and be saved by the blood of the Lamb, Father. Um, thank you so much, Father, for sending your Son, Jesus Yeshua, to die a gruesome death on the cross the ultimate sinless Savior, Lord, the ultimate ultimate sacrificial lamb, Lord, who died the most gruesome death you could ever die. And he took on all the sin debt of the whole world, Lord. We've only need to ask for forgiveness and accept him as our Lord and Savior and turn and repent from our sinful nature and go through your process of sanctification that you lead us through by your Spirit, Father. 
I just pray that many would be edified and blessed by this message today, and I pray that everyone within the sound of my voice would have a blessed and happy Thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you all for watching so much, and I pray that you all have a blessed Thanksgiving.